It's taken over a year to build, really. Going to restaurants and deciding what to order can be an overwhelming task on its own. Deciding which restaurant has the tastier dishes, the more sophisticated ambience, and how to rate the restaurant is a more tedious but rewarding task in the end. Fancy places are often synonymous with celebrity chef ownership. But cooking is really about doing the same thing over again. And while we've come to expect a degree of quality and accountability from the chefs we watch on television, sometimes the reality just doesn't measure up. So with that in mind, let us look at some of the worst celebrity chef-owned restaurants out there. Fat Cow by Gordon Ramsay. We do have good days. We do have very good days. Today's one of them, let me tell you. We all know it's true that Gordon Ramsay may just be the most popular celebrity chef out there, with the most popular food and cooking videos. Remember his awe-inducing lobster shelling trick? Or his life-changing scrambled eggs? A little bit creamy. Well, scrambled eggs to die for. Well, apparently there are some things that you just can't teach with consistency. The food at this particular restaurant is described as disappointing as well as overpriced. LA Weekly reviewer Besha Riddell claimed the food didn't exude the skill Ramsey has, and an article in The Telegraph by Keith Perry and Dan Hyde claimed Ramsey's restaurant has overpriced food. Meanwhile, an article in The Guardian shared the same sentiments, though this time for his other restaurants like Mays and Mayfair and Gordon Ramsay at Claridge's. <laughs> Guy's American Kitchen and Bar by Guy Fieri. But man, is it off the hook or what? It seems that a lot of people, critics, reviewers, and regular customers alike are up in arms about Guy Fieri all the time. Most of them have some very not nice things to say about both the man and his cooking. First, a very scathing review by Pete Wells for the New York Times of Guy's Times Square restaurant pulled no punches and asked a lot of rhetorical and biting questions. Let us just say that the critic's experience was the worst. He explained that the food has no identity and even less quality. But it's not just the hoi polloi that thinks this. Customers in online forums also describe this restaurant as horrible. Guy Fieri's restaurant needs to burn to the ground, a Sacramento customer by the name of Melanie wrote, while users Ruthie and Michelle agree writing yuck and annoying. One thing's for sure, as diners, we're being driven right out by this dive. Dinner by Heston Blumenthal. I just don't know how we did it, it's amazing. Heston Blumenthal is a celebrated British celebrity chef, known for owning the restaurant The Fat Duck. The Fat Duck is incredibly prestigious, with three Michelin stars and a reputation as number one on the world's 50 best restaurants list in 2005. But time makes fools of us all, because apparently this two Michelin starred restaurant dinner has a reputation as second worst, which kind of makes us wonder how exactly these stars are distributed. And everybody wins! The hotel dining room was ranked second worst restaurant in a 2014 Telegraph article sourced from Harden's 2015 London restaurants list. The article highlights how the Hardens list claims that Blumenthal's dinner restaurant is second on a list of most disappointing cooking. The list is echoed by an ITV article as well. How disappointing. Gatto by Bobby Flay. I'm looking for the mushroom, baby. Bobby Flay may be one of the most popular celebrity chefs out there. He's been on numerous television shows including Iron Chef America, Beat Bobby Flay, Throwdown with Bobby Flay, and many, many more. And only very recently, he's been seen in the company of celebrities such as Scarlett Johansson. I'm not looking to be here for 15 weeks, I want to be here for 15 years. A chef like Flay, who has such a huge following, is sure to garner a lot of attention to any restaurants he's associated with. Except, his restaurant Gatto has been panned by food critics, a fact that slightly contradicts how amazing he seems to be on his food shows. According to Ryan Sutton, it's not that it's so much terrible as it is boring. He uses words like ho-hum and ghastly to really illustrate his disdain for the Mediterranean restaurant. So remember, while Bobby might win during a lot of Throwdown with Bobby Flay episodes, he loses some as well in the real world. Del Pasto by Mario Batali. I feel confident that we might have a chance at it, so we're gonna shoot for it. Mario Batali may have been born in Seattle, but Italy runs through his blood. <laughs> He's a very established chef, restaurateur, writer, and television personality. Dad, that looks like the porn in the 70s? No. His achievements and the number of restaurants he's handling seem to speak to his talent and culinary prowess. He co-owns restaurants in New York, Las Vegas, and Boston, just to mention a few. But it seems like Batali has met his match with critics like Ryan Sutton, Robin Raisfeld, and Rob Patronite. In a Cheat Sheet article, it's revealed that the Del Pasto restaurant is overpriced and underwhelming. The two Robs are mightily confused about the restaurant's 100-layer lasagna, which is cut tableside. Besides the apparently strange cutting ritual, they also failed to discern any kind of real identity for the restaurant. 
Imperial Number no. 9 by Sam Talbot. You know, stepping on too many toes or hurting anyone, of course, but uh, yeah, I like to live loud. Sam Talbot is not only known as the sizzling Sicilian American chef who made it to the semifinals of Top Chef, he also appeared on the show three times over the next few seasons, including during an all star season. He's also known to have worked at restaurants like Dean and DeLuca, as well as appearing on a reality television show, The Real Housewives of New York City. But not unlike his run on the Top Chef show, Sam just couldn't quite make it to the very top. It's never stopped me from doing anything. Um, if anything, it's made me a little bit stronger. His restaurant, Imperial Number no. 9, made headlines for entirely the wrong reason, a scathing review. Food critic Sam Sifton described the tuna as inedible and having a spongy funk. The atmosphere of the place was also slammed. Perhaps the criticism does have a solid basis, as the restaurant has since closed its doors. Cut by Wolfgang Puck. You like something which makes you feel good, which nourishes your soul. Anyone who has ever casually flipped past the Food Network will have seen the face of Wolfgang Puck with his optimistic eyes and splendid cooking. The Austrian-born American chef and restaurateur has a lot of credentials up his sleeve. He's been involved with numerous cookbooks, restaurants, and show appearances. He's even appeared on CSI. What would you say is the most indispensable tool in your kitchen? Wolfgang Puck has also received several accolades, like a Daytime Emmy Award and a Star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. He's definitely one of the biggest TV chefs ever. But according to one critic, Wolfgang's restaurant cut doesn't quite make the cut. Ryan Sutton, who actually seems to have been slaying a lot of celebrity chefs in this video, describes the steaks at the restaurant as quite bland and lacking in flavor. Can buy me love. The drinks are described as either saccharine or forgettable. All in all, his restaurant experience at Cut left him feeling that it's not a good restaurant. Akimero by Richard Sandoval. You know, when I build restaurants today, I think, you know, going back 15 years ago was about the food. Just like Sam Talbot, Richard Sandoval is a top chef star. And just like Mario Batali, this celebrity chef owns a lot of restaurants. In fact, he owns more than 30 at our count. This shows that he's really passionate about food. He's more popular than your average chef, but perhaps not so surprisingly, one of those restaurants doesn't quite live up to the others. And according to food critic Craig Le on, this is exactly the sort of situation that Akamero found itself in. The critic from the Philadelphia Inquirer described how Akamero is an out of touch and bungled attempt to create a destination restaurant that matters to anyone. <laughs> and the restaurant today, I think, if 50% is the food, the music, the lighting. Harsh words that suggest that this restaurant struggles to connect with its customers. While not too expensive, the food was apparently not very flavorful either, so it's no wonder that it lacked any sort of identity. Gramwich by Graham Elliott. This happened, and to, to be honored this way is so humbling and just ridiculous to me. We probably know Graham Elliott best from the Master Chef series as one of the show's formidable judges and hosts. But before he was on Master Chef, he also competed on other television cooking shows himself, including Iron Chef and Top Chef Masters. So it's safe to say he really made it big time. Yeah, General. absolutely. Moving on from contestant to judge in just a couple of years, he was also named one of the best new chefs in food and wine back in 2004. But can the same claim about hitting the big time be said for his restaurant? Julia Kramer from Time Out Chicago doesn't think so. She explained that Gramwich's selection of international sandwiches suffered from both repeated failures of execution and lack of care in their conception. The restaurant eventually closed, unmourned by all, according to the Chicago Reader. <laughs> per se, by Thomas Keller. The experience at a restaurant of this nature should bring a smile to your face. Thomas Keller is a Michelin star chef, so it should be unsurprising that he's also won numerous other awards, like the best California chef in 1996 and the best chef in America in 1997. Impressively, he has seven Michelin stars in total between his three restaurants, the French Laundry, Bouchon, and Per Se. It seems like Thomas Keller has been blazing a trail for the last 20 years. And, and, and to find joy in that is, I, I think, uh, the real key. But is Per Se past its prime? Many critics seem to think so. In particular, New York Times critic Pete Wells gave the restaurant two less stars than his previous four-star review. The dishes are described as random and purposeless, while the yam dumplings were described as limp and dispiriting. In fact, it just seems that Wells had nothing good to say about the per se experience. Vandal by Chris Santos. I call it research and development in my uh, fields, yes. yeah. Many food trends have come our way over the years. Some of them have been a blessing, but some, frankly, have been completely annoying. There was a deconstructed food trend from burgers to coffee. There was a crazy milkshake trend and the rainbow-colored everything trend, too. Lately, it's all avocado toast and organic drinks. And it seems that Chris Santos's restaurant, Vandal, isn't one to fall behind the trends, focusing primarily on mini foods. So next, we are gonna do a scalloped mango mojito ceviche. 
Eater's Ryan Sutton described delicacies like mini ramen, mini burgers, and mini knishes. Though clearly, Sutton did not see this restaurant in a very positive light, as he follows it with you could fit the entirety of Samilla into the men's room at Vandal and still have space left over. In conclusion, the restaurant was described to be just a machine to make money. It seems Vandal was nothing but a gimmick. Jamie's Italian by Jamie Oliver. Well, that is the Jamie's Italian. Yes! Burger. Another one of the more popular chefs to have graced our TV screens, joining the ranks of Ina Garten, Mario Batali, or Bobby Flay, is Jamie Oliver. The celebrity chef has continuously advocated for delicious but definitely nutritious food. Besides his cookbooks and television shows, he's notable for his advocacy of fresh and organic food. Remember that campaign that he launched against chicken nuggets? What trying to do today is show the kids what is in their nuggets, unless they're getting good ones. But does the food at his restaurants live up to expectations? It seems not. His restaurant Jamie's Italian has been getting mixed reviews for a long time. It's been famous more for its blunders than its successes, including the time they served a customer with celiac disease some wheat pasta. Reportedly, Oliver himself doesn't even run this restaurant, and the food has the unfortunate combination of being both overpriced <laughs> as well as underwhelming. Joanne by Art Smith. Hey, I'll put your chicken where your mouth is. Celebrity chef Art Smith has really lived up to his name. His talents have been highlighted on shows like Top Chef Duels and Iron Chef America. I never put myself in that league. And he's been described as a genuinely major talent by Steve Cuozo of the New York Post. But Cuozo, while praising the chef, has also said quite the opposite about his restaurant Joanne. And unlike the Lady Gaga album of the same name, which has only received praise, this restaurant didn't quite garner a similar response. And yes, Art did collaborate with Gaga's parents for the restaurant. Yet, Cuozo described the calamari as being like leather and the veal as unspeakably fatty. All in all, the restaurant is not a place that food critic Cuozo would recommend. Maybe fans of the singer should stick to listening to the album instead. Forenz Osteria by Fabio Viviani. Every single dish year, there is so much time, love, and care yeah. that, you know, it's gonna be special on its own. We know that many Italians really have a passion for their food. The same can definitely be said for Fabio Viviani, whose passion for food stems from his childhood. From growing up as a baker boy to becoming a sous chef during his teenage years, Viviani is now a popular celebrity chef, restaurateur, and wine cellar. You could say he's been cooking his entire life, but while his appearances on Top Chef may only elicit positive reactions, <laughs> The same can't quite be said for his restaurant Forenz Osteria. It came under heavy fire from critic S. Irene Verbilla, who described the restaurant as a tourist trap, the menu as having no identity and being essentially Italian food for dummies. The food was described as greasy and unattractive, while the wine was called banal and lazy. Forenz Osteria definitely sounds like a place to skip. Odium by Timothy Hollingsworth. Odium is a Latin abstract term for something that you do in your leisure. Could be eating, drinking wine, studying. A lot of Top Chef contestants and favorites have really blazed a trail on television by showing their fearless skills and their passion for food in the heated and pressure-filled kitchens. One one of these is Timothy Hollingsworth, a Top Chef alum who also appeared on the Food Network show Guilty Pleasures. Why don't I base the menu off of these experiences? But does his restaurant Odium live up to his reputation? Critic Riddell from LA Weekly seems to think not, saying that the restaurant seems like a souped up version of every trendy restaurant in town. But while the food isn't entirely disastrous, the service is described as uncaring. Riddell goes even further, suggesting that the restaurant employs a sort of caste system in which one's social status or looks can garner them more dutiful attention from the staff. Truly unbelievable. For your chance to win an iPhone X, go ahead and gently press that subscribe button and politely ring that notification bell. Thanks for watching and we'll bite you next time.